Hey everyone, welcome to the ranking. Here's my ranking of the 20 highest grossing films of all time. Yes, as, my, as you saw in my last video, I did my ranking of the top 10 highest grossing films of 2017. I ranked them from my least favorite to my favorite. I thought I'd do that with the highest grossing films of all time. Instead of 10, I'm going to do 20. So, this might, be, this might take a little while, but I'll try to run through them as quick as I can. I'll try. No promises, but still. Yes, the 20 highest grossing films of all time. I could have done the top 100, but I don't have the energy to do that. But still, uh, it's surprising when you find out what the 20 highest grossing films of all time is. Worldwide, by the way. And, yeah, it's, it's shocking, because almost, like, quite a few of these movies I don't even like. And it's just, like, you're just shocked to see, like, how did these, this many people see this movie? Probably multiple times. Like, how, why do people pay money to see garbage like this? It just it baffles me. But still, I digress. Let's get to it. This is my ranking of the 20 highest grossing films of all time, in my opinion, from my least favorite to my favorite. Yes, I'm ranking them from my least favorite to my favorite. All right, let's get started. Coming to number 20 is Transformers Age of Extinction. This is easily the, the shittiest movie that is part of the top 20 highest grossing films of all time. I don't know where it ranks in the top 20. I really don't give a fuck. The fact that it made this much money, it hit into the billions, is absolutely absurd and ridiculous. These Transformers movies are garbage. This is the worst one, in my opinion. Yeah. Revenge of the Fallen's close, though, but this is awful. Mark Wahlberg is a shitty addition to this franchise. Like, he's awful. The way they did Galvatron, then they just completely forget about it in the next film. Just It makes no sense. Just everything is awful in this movie. This is the one with Kelsey Grammer, I think, and T.J. Miller. They're awful. Just th th There's this dude who's in love with this underage girl. It, it's creepy. It's weird. There's a lot of advertisement for Bud Light. Product placement. Woo! That's the Michael Bay way. Visuals look awful, the action's boring, the Transformers are, again, they're side characters, they're not even, they focus on the humans in these movies, it's stupid, and god, this movie's awful. Coming number 19 is Transformers Dark of the Moon, yes, oh, thank god, this is the only Transformers movie that also made the top 20 high grossing films of all time. If they all made the top 20, I would just, I, I'd hang myself, actually, uh... Dark of the Moon is awful. It's still bad. It's really bad. Shia LaBeouf, again, milking it. They got a new girl. She's just as awful as Megan Fox. They got Dr. McDreamy, Patrick Dempsey, as a villain. <laughs> That's a joke. Uh, Megatron. Who cares? They even got Leonard Nimoy in this movie. Oh my god, Leonard Nimoy. Why would you do this to yourself? They have Star Trek jokes. They're not funny. Uh, it just It's not a good movie. It's very boring. It's very bloated and convoluted. It just it makes no sense half the time. And the action, it just you can barely see it. It's just ugly to look at. And it's just awful. Coming in number 18 is Minions. Minions, these, oh my god, banana! This is so annoying. Um, I don't hate the Despicable Me movies. The first two were decent. The new one was okay. Just, I don't hate these movies. They're, they're, they're just, they're fine. They're entertaining for your children and stuff. They're just mindless entertainment for your kids. Minions is not good for anyone. The Minions movie is just awful. It's unfunny, it's so dumb, it's so meandering, it is so pandering, it's just, it's, it's mind-numbing, it's really stupid, no jokes land, it's, it's juvenile, it's just ridiculous, and hated it, I absolutely hated it, and the fact that it was the highest grossing out of the whole Despicable Me franchise is pretty baffling. Coming to number 17 is The Fate of the Furious, yeah, this is now, this is now one of the highest grossing films of all time. I just talked about this in my last ranking, and oh my, I can't stand this franchise anymore. This is easily, it's right there with Tokyo Drift, it's one of the worst fa Fast and Furious films. Dominic Toretto has gone rogue, and it's up to the team, the family, to put his side of his, put his stop to Dominic Toretto and the villain Shelley Theron, who has a very bad hairstyle in the film. And then, uh, something about a child, and them on the ice, and Tyrese spouting out nonsense, and... The only good thing about this movie is Dwayne Johnson and Jason Statham, and they're not in it enough. It's just a ridiculous film, and why did people see this? Like, God, now we're getting more of them. Just, it's, it's awful. 
Coming in number 16 is Avatar. Avatar is literally, literally the most, one of the most overrated films of all time. I'm glad, that, yes, there's like a, like a hatred towards it now. Like, I don't hate it. It's just not good. I don't know why it made so much money in the box office. Just, it's, it's Pocahontas. It's Dances with Wolves. It's Pocahontas. It's Fern Gully. It has the same story and message as almost every environmental film ever existed. Sam Worthington's bland, Zoe Saldana is the only one that's trying, James Cameron's direction is just meh, Sigourney Weaver is just meh, Giovanna Rebsi is just meh, Stephen Lang looks like he's having fun, but the visuals are okay at times, but even sometimes the visuals are pretty underwhelming. The Na'vi is very obvious CGI, it's nothing groundbreaking or amazing. The world of Pandora, some, some shots are really beautiful, but some are not that great. The characters aren't that great. It's not very interesting. It's super long and just it's not that good. Number 15 is Furious 7. Yes, it's another Fast and Furious film. This is the last one I'll be talking about. Furious 7, much better than Fate and the Furious. Still a really dumb, mindless action film. Like, they're, you should see the shit they do in this movie. It's really dumb. You have Dwayne the Johnson ripping out of a cast with his muscles, then jumping from building to building in these cars, then Diesel literally lifting up a car. It makes no sense. There is no logic or physics in this film. Like, it is basically a fiction story. It is a superhero story. These people become superheroes. They're like Avengers. They're just, they're not human. Just, it's absurd. Kurt Russell's awesome. Dwayne Johnson is awesome. Jason Statham's pretty awesome. Paul Walker is awesome. Only things that save this film. Coming to number 14 is Beauty and the Beast. Yes, again, I've talked about this a lot, especially lately. It's You don't need this movie. You, we have the original 1991 film, and that's good enough. This is just basically rehashing it. The differences and the changes are good, like the music and some of the characters and the villains. They're nice. And it's nice to look at, but it's nowhere near as good as the original, so why did you remake it? It's pointless. Coming to number 13 is Jurassic World. Just do, 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 Good movie. Very good movie. Um, it's fun. It's dumb. It's entertaining. It's better than 2 and 3. I, I didn't like The Lost World that much. Jurassic Park 3 was really stupid. Uh... You'll never, we'll never get another Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park is just like this one amazing, groundbreaking film. What Spielberg did with that film, with the effects, and even the characters. It's just an amazing, iconic film, and you can never duplicate that. Jurassic World is just a silly, fun monster film. It, it works for what it is. Chris Pratt is fun. The scene with the T-Rex at the ending is badass. And just, there's some cool, entertaining scenes, and there's some things that I've always wanted to see in a Jurassic Park movie. They showed it in this film, and it's pretty entertaining. It's not great. It, by no means it's great, but it's fun. Coming to number 12 is Iron Man 3. Yes, the best Christmas movie in the MCU. <laughs> Shane Black did a good job. I think Iron Man 3 is very good. I, I like Iron Man 3. Some people don't. Fine. I like it. Even with Div the Mandarin, it, it doesn't anger me that much. I liked what they did with Tony, Tony Stark. I like that he has PTSD because of what happened in the Avengers. I think he was really good, very compelling in this film. I liked Gwyneth Paltrow, Don Cheadle. Even Guy Pierce was pretty good. Like, the movie is a fine, enjoyable, hilarious film, good Christmas movie, and yeah, I don't understand the hate. I like it. Coming in number 11 is Avengers Age of Ultron. Yes. There are no strings on me. <laughs> Great film. I loved James Spader as Ultron. So good. I like this movie. It's a fun, entertaining film. Yes, I know from the trailers, people thought we were going to get a much darker, more sinister film. Because those trailers. The Avengers Age of Ultron trailer is one of the great superhero trailers. That trailer was so good. The movie was a little more light, more lighthearted than people thought, because people thought it'd be a much darker film because of the music, the Pinocchio music, and then James Spader's like, "There are no strings on me." The people thought he'd be a terrifying villain. He wasn't. He was more of a smart ass, kind of like Tony Stark. I still liked it. The movie was fun. It was enjoyable. It had some cool action, good comedy, good character moments, and yeah, I think it's a good film. Coming in number ten is The Dark Knight Rises. Yes, get get ha ha. Yes, this movie, great. 
great film. I, I, I really like Dark Knight Rises. Some people, again, don't love it. I think it's good. It's nowhere near as good as The Batman Begins or Dark Knight, but it's still great. Bane, great villain. Tom Hardy's awesome. Anne Hathaway, great. Um, I like uh, Christian Bale when he did this film. Even Joseph Gordon-Levitt was good. I don't like what they did with him at the ending. That was kind of ridiculous, but still, he was good in the film as John Blake. Michael Caine, Morgan Freeman, all great. The cameo of Cillian Murphy was amazing, so good. And yeah, I liked this movie. It was a fun, entertaining Batman film, a good conclusion. I did not like um, uh, Marion Cotillard as uh, Talia Al Ghul. That was so dumb. I did not like that. The twist was very obvious. That I, just, I didn't like her as Talia Al Ghul. Like, she, should, she should have just been Miranda, Miranda. Is that her name in the movie? She should, she should have just been that. And just killed her off or something. Having her as uh, Talia al Ghul, she, just, she didn't fit that role really well, but still. The movie's good, good action, good characters, just good Batman movie. Curtain number nine is Titanic. Yes, Titanic. This was the highest grossing film for quite some time, and then a few other movies just like beated it. Uh, great film, though. It's a good romance film. It's a, it's a fictional story centered on a real-life event, the incident of Titanic, how it crashed into the iceberg, killing many people, like 1,500 people and stuff, and really sad story. The third act is intense. The love story does work. Leonardo DiCaprio, Kate Winslet are both good. There are some very dated things in the film, but it is a very good, groundbreaking film. The effects look fantastic. James Cameron did a very good job directing this film, and yeah, it's a very good movie, Titanic. It's not amazing, but it is a very good film. Code number eight is a film most people will disagree with me on, but I love it. That's Frozen. Yeah, Frozen. Is it overhyped? Oh my god, is it ever overhyped? My god, it's the kids' fault. I, I, I can't always blame the kids, but still. Yeah, people were obsessing with this movie for years when it came out. It's not a masterpiece, but it is a very, very good Disney film, and I still love it. The, the music is great. The characters are really good, too. Anna and Elsa are great characters. They're great role models for women, and they're just, they're great. They're funny, they're enjoyable, they're compelling, they're three-dimensional. Very good characters. Even the villain, Hans, is a good villain. Uh, I like Kristoff. He's a good, he's a good side character. Olaf is a very funny character. I like that he doesn't go too high-pitched with his voice. He's more quiet with his humor, and it's funny. And the music is fantastic. It's like watching a Broadway show. It's absolutely amazing. They just cut the musical numbers right in the third act, though, randomly. But still, it's beautifully animated, too. It, is, it, it looks amazing. It sounds amazing. It's a really good story. It has a really good message. I think it's a damn great film. Some people, I think it's overrated. I completely understand, but I still love it. Coding number seven is Skyfall. Yes, Skyfall to be tumble. A great song. Great song by Adele. Uh, great movie. It's not my favorite Bond film. It's no Casino Royale, but still it's up there as one of the great Bond films. What Sam Mendes did with this film was so great. It's a very artsy James Bond film, but still a very good story. They talk more in details about James Bond and his backstory. Daniel Craig is great. Judy Dench is so good. Javier Bardem is one of the great Bond villains. He is so good to understand his motivation and why he wants to take down M. Not the whole corporation, mostly just M, because what she did, she left him to die. And he fucked his face off and shit like that. And it's a great movie. It's got a great like Home Alone climax. It's just it's a great film. Really well directed, beautifully shot, great action sequences, great Bond film, one of the best Bond films. Coming in number six is Star Wars The Last Jedi. Yes, just talked about this in my last video. Love it. I love that it's very decisive. I love that it's profound and thought-provoking and incredibly ambitious. I liked everything that they did in this film. I don't need to talk about this movie again and again and again. Everyone knows my thoughts and opinions. I love this film, and that's not going to change. Coming in number five is The Avengers. The Avengers is a film I was looking forward to for so long. Right at the end of Iron Man 1, they gave us a promise, and they delivered on the promise. They gave us the Avengers. They gave us their movies. They gave us a Thor, Captain America, Iron Man. They gave us all their films to get us attached to the characters. Then they put them in a movie together, directed by Joss Whedon. That sounds amazing. It, it is amazing. It's got great action, great comedy. The character interactions are fantastic. It's still to this day, it just it creates that... 
amazing fanboy and me just like I feel like a kid watching the Avengers it's just it's so fun so delightful it's cool seeing my comic book heroes all on the screen together I wish they did that properly with Justice League but still Avengers one of the great MCU films coming in number four is Star Wars The Force Awakens Star Wars The Force Awakens again I haven't, I haven't seen a Star Wars film in theaters since, like, the prequels. And, again, I wasn't alive in 1977 and 1980 and 1983 to watch the original trilogy. So seeing a truly great Star Wars film in theaters for the first time was amazing. It was so good because I saw the prequels and they were very underwhelming. But seeing The Last, uh, seeing the last Jedi, seeing The Force Awakens opening night, it just it meant so much to me. It just... It, it touched me, it was amazing, seeing all these characters, these great new characters, this great action, great villains, this amazing story, just, oh, I'll, I'll never forget the first time I saw it in this theaters. it was absolutely amazing, and Force Awakens still holds up, J.J. Abrams did an amazing job, I love that he brought these new characters with Finn and Rey, Poe Dameron and Kylo Ren, great characters, Han Solo, what they did with him was fantastic, everything about this movie just works. I, as of now, I still think it's maybe a little better than Last Jedi, but that might change over time, but Force Awakens, amazing film. Coming in number three is Harry Potter, The Deathly Hallows Part 2. Yes, the conclusion to the Harry Potter franchise. I love Harry Potter. Everyone knows I love Harry Potter. Harry Potter is fucking amazing. Yes, I'm a Ravenclaw, by the way. <laughs> no one asks, no one cares, but still, by the way. Anyways, uh, Harry Potter, this is not my favorite Harry Potter film. It's my second favorite. My favorite is... Uh, Prisoner of Azkaban. Uh, the way Alfonso Cuarón directed that film was absolutely amazing. Everything about this fil that film was amazing. It was loyal to the source material, but also being very different and very unique. Deathly Hallows Part 2 is just a f fucking amazing conclusion and an amazing climax to this big franchise. It's so good. Voldemort is intimidating. Snape has one of the great backstories of all time in any film. That whole scene is one of my favorite scenes in films when Harry learns the truth about Snape and what him and Dumbledore planned. Amazing. One of the great triple agents of, in films. Just so good. I love it. I love how they ended the story. I loved the whole big battle sequence at Hogwarts. It was just incredible. This entire film delivered all the goods and it ended the story properly. Like, I have seen movies, and, and especially TV shows, that don't know how to end something properly. And Harry Potter did it properly, and it's just so good. It's my second favorite Harry Potter film, and I'm glad it was one of the highest grossing films of all time. Coming in number two is Captain America Civil War. Yes, America. Yes, Captain America Civil War, my favorite film of the MCU as of now. It's one of the highest grossing films of all time. Does not surprise me. It's one of the great, the great, in my opinion, MCU film. So good. What the Russos did with this film, amazing. The airport sequence, one of the great action scenes in the MCU. It's fucking amazing and mind-blowing. I love what they did with Captain America and Iron Man. I love that they didn't stick true to the comics because they wanted to go a different approach in a different direction, which was great because I didn't know where the movie was going. It was so good. It was a great spy film. It was a great movie about corruption in the government. And stuff. Who to trust, who not to trust. Like Tony wants to be with the government. And Steve wants to rebel against the government. It's, just, it's, it's interesting. The political talk, the, the action, the character moments, they're all fantastic. And so well constructed, and so well directed, and so well written. The Russos really did a great job. Downey Jr. gives an amazing performance in just Civil War. One of the best MCU films. One of the best highest grossing films. And my number one favorite highest grossing film of all time is Lord of the Rings Return of the King. Yes, Lord of the Rings Return of the King was in the top 20 highest grossing films of all time. Now, out of the top 20, it is my favorite film out of the top 20. I love it. Fellowship of the Ring is still my favorite, but Return of the King is an excellent film. I was bawling my eyes out when I saw this in theaters opening night. I was bawling. How they ended this movie was so upsetting, just so beautiful. Everyone hates the multiple endings. I love the, the bajillion endings because, again, this is a big story. It'll take a lot of endings to end every character's story, and they do it properly. Like I said with Death Hells Part 2, it ends a franchise in a proper way, in a great way. It's so good. It's dark. It's raw. It's action-packed. It's a great film. It won 11 Academy Awards. It's got one of the most wins at the Oscars. It's so good. The 
the, the sequences are amazing. The Battle of Minas Tirith is one of the great battles. The climax with Gollum and Frodo, what a climax. Just, it's so good. There's so many amazing moments, especially with Sam and Frodo. He's like, I may not be able to carry that ring, but I can carry you. Then the music plays just, oh, the score, it's just epic. Everything about this movie is amazing. It did everything proper. Still Fellowship still my favorite film, but Return of the King is a close second, and it's hands down, I think it's the best film. It, it, the, the best film that is also one of the highest grossing films of all time. Yeah, I think I said that properly. But yeah, number one. So yeah, that was my ranking of all 20 of the highest grossing films of all time, from my least favorite to my favorite. So in the comment section below, please tell me, did you agree with this ranking? If not, give me your ranking of all 20 of these films, in your opinion, from your least favorite to your favorite. Comment below, let me know, and as always, like this video, please like, subscribe to this channel, and join the dark side.